Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Lure Painting with Zach Baker. I'm Zach Baker and today we're going to be painting another easy lure pattern for beginners. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, things might look a little bit different to you and that's because they are. I'm in the process of getting everything set up in my shop so it's all in one location. Uh, stuff's probably going to change again in the future. It'll look a little bit different. I'm kind of waiting on the okay before I do some more uh, work to the shop. Today we're going to be doing the paint pattern on a 2.5 square bill. I've already prepped this one so it's ready to go. If you haven't seen my video or you're curious on how I prep my baits beforehand, I'll have that video linked below. I don't have anything else to say so let's go ahead and paint this bait. So for this bait we're going to be using just three colors. Now if you want you can add some more to it. Uh, I'm just keeping it as simple as I can. We're going to start off with some opaque black, do some white, throw in a stencil pattern, and do some more white and some of the silver. If you don't have the silver, that's okay. You can do it with just the white or the black. Or if you have some extra other colors you want to throw in there, feel free to do that too. I'm just going to show you an easy pattern that I enjoy doing, and it's really effective for catching fish. I'm going to start off with the black, and then we'll move back on to the white. Now, the reason I'm starting with the black is because after I do the white, I'm going to put the stencil on and do more white. Otherwise, I would normally start with the white. I just don't want to clean out the brush more than once, trying to save a step and make it a little bit quicker. So I'm going to do the back of it a solid black, and then a little bit, I'm going to carry it down just past that midline, because we'll have the white fade into that, and later on transition into silver. Now I'm going to hit this with a hairdryer and see if there's any spots that I missed. Do a couple little touch-ups. Beautiful. I'm going to clean out the airbrush. We'll switch over to our white and do the whole belly in that color. Okay, I'm going to hit that with a hairdryer and do another coat since the white is a little bit of a thinner color. And then we'll be ready to do our stencil pattern. Okay, second coat is on. I'm gonna hit it really good with the hairdryer because we're getting ready to put on a stencil pattern and I don't want that paint to be tacky or wet at all. So I think for the pattern that we're doing today using a thinner stencil, and I don't know if that makes sense by the word thinner, but one that the where the stencil actually is is thinner compared to how thick this one is. I don't want much of that black to show through, so having a thinner one or one that's got bigger gaps I think will look a little bit better. Now this one is from Walmart. It's just from the sewing section. I bought a big set, or you know, I bought a yard or two of it and had way more than I needed to. Uh, so I'm gonna put this on there and also because I do want the black that shows to be a solid black or close to it, I want to make sure that my stencil pattern is on really tight because we are gonna be adding more white to this before we move on. So I'm gonna get this on there nice and tight and then we'll come back and start spraying some more white. Okay, stencil pattern's on, I'm gonna start spraying some white. I'm gonna cover up everything that uh, is not currently white. That way this wicked silver will show up a lot better than if I just sprayed it on top of the black. And sometimes if you have on a stencil pattern and you're really trying to cover up another color, I recommend definitely hitting it with a hairdryer in between. That way it doesn't build up so thick that it'll run underneath of the stencil pattern. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. Hairdryer and then another coat. So after the stencil pattern comes off, there's still gonna be some black showing through on the top. And I'm perfectly fine with that because I want the back to be silver. It's gonna be a little bit of a darker version of the silver, which I think would look better anyways. Whereas if after we take the pattern off and I try to spray that with white, it's gonna mess up the stencil pattern and I don't really wanna do that. So this is one of those that happens to work out good for the way that I want it to. I'm going to clean out the airbrush and then we're gonna move on to this wicked silver color. So I recently had somebody message me on Instagram, I believe, and said asked about this wicked color. And they said that it clogs their airbrush all the time, and it does for me too, unless I water it down first. Now, I'll show you exactly what I do with that. But yeah, if you're out there, you're trying to spray some of these pearl colors, it does help sometimes to add a couple drops of water into your airbrush uh, before painting. So I'm going to clean out the brush. I'll show you guys exactly how I do that, and then we'll add on some more paint. Okay, so for this silver, 
I just put a couple of drops into the brush. I'm going to go for four all together. And then I will take this is just a little cup full of water and I'm just going to do a couple drops. It doesn't take a whole lot. And normally I have some toothpicks, but since I just moved everything, I don't know where anything's at. Uh, so anything that you have to stir with works. We're going to use this little Zacto knife blade. I just kind of stir it around inside there. Little toothpicks work a little bit better. And then it should, yep, spray spray real nicely. Now I wish I knew the exact uh, ratio. I just thin this whole bottle down, but I don't want to ruin a whole bottle of paint. I don't use it that often, so I don't think it's really necessary to risk ruining it. So for this Wicked Silver, I'm gonna go, so if you remember our black came all the way down to about right here. I'm gonna go up just a little bit from that black. So once we take this off, it's gonna be white faded into black and then our silver is gonna start just above the midline right here. It'll fade down just a little bit, but I want it to be solid silver up here on the ridge of the bait. So that's what we're gonna do now. Now this color is especially watered down. It takes a couple or a coat or two for it to look the silver that I'm wanting it to. So I'll probably do the hairdryer as always and then build it up till we get it how we want it. All right, I think I'm happy with that. It probably doesn't look a whole lot different for you guys on camera, uh, but there's some silver on there, so I'm going to hit with the hairdryer pretty good, and then we're gonna take off that stencil pattern. Since the silver is still in my brush, I want to go ahead and spray the back of this silver too. There you go, you can kind of see the stencil pattern going on. And I think it could just be a personal preference, but I like how that stencil pattern's thin, like I'd mentioned earlier. That way that black isn't really solid and bold and sticking out at you. Uh, once the clear coat goes on, it'll make it, it'll pop a little bit more and look a little bit darker. But I like the subtle scale pattern instead of it being bold, at least on this pattern. Okay, I still got that silver in the brush, so I'm gonna go ahead and spray that along the back to hide where our uh, little clamps were. Since it's so concentrated in one area, I'm gonna do the hairdryer probably a couple times. I'm having a little bit trouble trying to decide if I actually want to spray it black or not now. I don't know. I, I have goals or intentions of doing like the shad dot on the side, but uh, we might end up doing some black folks. Either there's some people saying do it, do it, do it, or there's some people saying don't. I think I'm gonna go with the crew that's saying do it. Or you know what? Let's do let's do the shad dot first, and then we can see how it go looks and goes from there. I'm gonna clean out the brush. We're gonna be using some opaque black and uh, spraying that on. Then we'll decide. Sometimes I really struggle trying to make the decision. Uh, okay, I don't know. Clean out the brush for the shad dot. I think this is also helpful for beginners. Uh, just getting a piece of cardstock or whatever you have available, I would recommend something thicker like cardstock. And just using a hole punch and punching a hole in the center. That's what I'm gonna do for this one. Recently, I've been doing uh, just I've been doing the dot without doing any sort of stencil, and I'm really liking the way that looks. But if it, it's a little bit harder still for me to have a nice dot or even on both sides. So if you're new to airbrushing, this is a really good way you can get a nice perfect dot or at least close to it. I know some people say that uh, using a stencil like this doesn't look natural because there's no perfect circles in nature. Uh, but for our purposes of trying to paint a bait and uh, trying to make it easy for anyone that might be learning, I love the stencil and that's what we're gonna be doing. So I've got some opaque black loaded up in the brush. One thing I do like doing with my stencils, you can see how the dot's off-centered. That way, if you're trying to put your stencil further back, or I'm sorry, your dot further back, it'll be the same on both sides, where if it's close to center, I guess if you had a dead center, it wouldn't matter. Uh, but make sure whichever one you go with, it is, uh, you'll match it on the other side instead of accidentally flipping it like that. That way, your dots line up. For this one, I want the dot to be a little bit further back on the bait, and because the bait is also bigger, 
So I'm going to line this up and then on most of these baits, there's that center line going down. So what I do is I'll split the difference on that center line. That way my dots will be in the same spot on both sides. So going up to the gill plate and then splitting the difference on uh, the line going down the side of the bait. I'm gonna do the hair dryer on both the stencil pattern and the bait. And we're also going to be doing a dot up here on the gill plate. I'll show you how I do that as well. Gonna flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. There we go, now both of our dots are lined up pretty darn close. Now it's completely personal preference on where you put your shad dot. Uh, I like doing them all over the place. I'll have some right at the gill plate, right towards the back. It's just completely up to you and what it is you're wanting to do. So for the dot up on the gill plate, I'm going to use the back of a paintbrush, if I can find one. And then what I'm gonna do is just dip the brush into the paint, and we're gonna do a dot up on the gill plate too. I'm gonna to shake this up first as well. Get a nice little bit on there. I always test it on the table. Yep, getting a nice little dot. And then I'm just gonna go right towards the point of the gill plate and do that on both sides. Probably dip it again. I'm just using the back of a paintbrush. Now sometimes I also like to get a little bit crazy and do several dots. Uh, it's completely up to you. I think I like it like that. Actually, just kidding. No, yeah, I'm gonna leave it like that. And I also think I decided I'm gonna add more black to the bait. I know at the beginning I said we're just gonna be using white and silver and black but it is progressed. So if you like it like this, uh, then, then you're done. But I'm gonna go ahead and darken it up a little bit. I'm gonna do it around the eyes and then along the back. Now I'm not gonna go a solid black, I'm just gonna do it real lightly. Okie doke, there we go. I think I'm going to hit it with the hair dryer and then we're gonna put some eyes in it and this bait is done and ready for clear coat. I'm also, the more I look at it, the more I'm wanting to add more colors. Like I feel like some red on the belly would be good. Uh, I mean, it's a shad pattern. You can really do whatever you want. Uh, I should have mentioned way earlier, but I got into it and forgot. Whenever the stencil pattern was on would have been a good time to add another color. So if you wanted to do like a real light blue, maybe the shad in your area have yellow, whatever it is, I would have done it up here towards the top instead of the silver or with the silver would have been a good place to use that. I am going to put some red eyes into this and then we'll get some clear coat on her and it will uh, be done. I just shook my super glue like it was paint. Woo, that's a lot of glue. If that happens to you and that much glue comes out, as long as you're quick, just hold a paper towel up there and you can wipe up some of it. I'm feeling like that's gonna kinda glue that uh, tape down to my bill, so I might have to do some cleanup with that. I'll probably just use a Zacto knife and scrape it off. There's one side. There we go, that's a little bit more. Uh... Okie doke, there we go. I'm gonna get this clear coated and we'll take some final shots of it. If there's any other patterns or stuff you guys want, especially for the beginners, please let me know. I also have a bunch of other patterns I'm working on that I'll be coming out with soon. Uh, but let me know if there's something in particular you're looking for. I'd love to be able to gear my videos towards what you guys are wanting. Uh, so let's go get this clear coated. Mm -hmm.